Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Special thanks to everyone who left a nice comment in the last video about the discrete amplifier project closeout. Really appreciate that. You might be wondering about the next project I mentioned, the JAT EZ amplifier. Those bigger projects do take more of my time off camera. And I've been quite busy with work, but I absolutely am going to do something on that. But for now, I wanted to do a very simple amplifier. Okay, here is the circuit I've come up with. It's a single active element Class A amplifier. I say single active element because there's only one transistor. Now technically there's two transistors because this is a Darlington configuration, but it's all in one package to make it neat and tidy. One thing you usually see in these circuits is a constant current source or even an inductor. But in this circuit I'm not using one, I'm just using a resistor to make this as simple as possible. However, doing so, I have to make some concessions because a resistor makes a lousy constant current source. You see, I would like to get about one watt out of this amplifier. So with an 8 ohm load, that means the peak of the signal would go up to 4 volts. That would mean half an amp through 8 ohms. However, since I'm using a resistor as a constant current source, I have to run more current than that or I may not reach that amount of output power. So I'm going to use a 15 volt supply and that should allow me enough headroom to get that output voltage swing. You know I need 8 volts peak to peak and you lose quite a bit in this resistor and some in the rest of the circuit. So that's the reason for using this voltage. This node here is what I'm calling the output node. It's between the resistor here, which I'm calling the current source, and the transistor. Because there will be a voltage between this point and ground where the speaker is connected, I'm putting a capacitor between the speaker because I don't want DC voltage to flow through the speaker. I only want the varying voltage, which is our AC signal, to go through the capacitor and through the speaker. Now I'm showing the speaker as a resistor because I drew this up in LT Spice and you know, I ran simulations on it so that's the only reason that's shown like this. This is actually your speaker. And because these circuits are very dependent on the current flowing through them it's very important to design the amplifier to use with a certain speaker impedance and in this case I'm using 8 ohm loads. So again I'm running I'm going to run extra current to make up for the losses and you know because a speaker is actually a reactive load I have to consider that as well. I'm taking some voltage and signal back from the output node and bringing it to the base of the transistor the reason for doing that is I need to bias this transistor and also some of the signal will come back and act as negative feedback which would linearize the circuit and reduce the distortion. This resistor here from base to ground helps me to stabilize the bias I've set up here and this emitter resistor also helps to stabilize the bias and provides a little bit of negative feedback as well. And having these feedbacks also eliminates a lot of the drift due to temperature change of this transistor. And you have two transistors in the package here and they'll drift and shift the current a little bit. On the input circuit here we have a capacitor. The reason for that is if we connect a signal source here and it conducts some of our DC current, it will throw off the bias points of this circuit. So we want to prevent any DC from flowing into or out of the input circuit. And this resistor here on the input acts as a voltage divider network for the feedback. If I didn't have this resistor here, the low impedance of the signal source could shunt away the AC feedback signal. Okay, I think I've said enough on this. I'll build this out on the breadboard and come back with the circuit. 
And here it is. Not much to it at all. Like I say, it's a pretty simple circuit. And you do see a nice sized heat sink. And this large resistor here is what I'm calling the current source resistor. It's going to consume a lot of power. So that's why I'm calling for a 10 watt. This one's 5 watt. I don't have a 10 watt, but for the short time I'm going to operate this thing in the video, it's it'll work just fine. Now I'm hoping to get about a watt of output, and this thing will consume at least 15 watts of power just to do that. That's just the way it is with Class A amplifiers that consume a lot of power. And this one is particularly inefficient because I'm using a resistor instead of a constant current source. Okay, let's power this up and see if it goes bang or not. Okay, it is on. It's drawing 1.21 uh, amps. It's uh, drawing a little more than predicted. The reason for that is, well, in LT Spice, it's set up for one amp. But one thing I found, and some other people found, a lot of the models that are provided for LT Spice, like the transistor model, are not that accurate. In fact, Bob Cordell, in his amplifier book, he went through and tested all the amplifiers and created his own spice models. In fact, that's what I used in some of the parts in my other amplifier project. I used his transistor models because they're more accurate. But I can monkey around and get that set, but I'll just run with what I have here. So I'm checking the output voltage here, and it's running a bit low. I think I might see, I might try adjusting one of those resistors. My output node is running at 5 volts and it probably should be running a little bit higher, like around 6.5 or 7. And I can smell this resistor, it's getting hot. I'm pretty impressed though, the uh, stability, you know, it started out about the same now that it's warmed up, you know, the heat sink is getting pretty hot now. And uh, the current draw hasn't really changed. Yeah, we're clipping on the bottom first, so I think I should see if I can adjust this amplifier a little better. So what I did is add this trimmer here. That way I don't have to fumble around with different values of resistors. So... You can eliminate this resistor. I just put a 1K in, but you can take it all the way out and just put in a trimmer and use that to find the adequate value. Okay, so we're looking at the output waveform. It's clipping. So as I adjust the trimmer, you can see how it shifts the clipping point. So I want to try to get that symmetrically as possible before it starts to clip. See if I can get as much output that I can. And it starts to clip right about here. So we're about 2.88 volts RMS. So 2.88 squared divided by 8 ohms. So we're getting a little over a watt. We'll just call it a watt. Okay, so now we're looking at the distortion. This is the 1 kilohertz fundamental. This node here is the 4.5 kilohertz pilot signal at 1%. So the amplifier at this setting has about 1% of a third harmonic and about half of a fifth. And the rest is just little blips. So you turn it up closer to clipping. So now we're getting into clipping. As I turn it down, that distortion stays pretty even with the uh, control setting, except when you get close to clipping. Well, 
actually, uh, I was expecting more distortion, maybe on the order of 2%, but uh, maybe 2 or 3%. You know, when I tested some of those other basic Class A circuits, they're getting a huge second order harmonic, but this one is delivering more of a third. That's probably has to do with our uh, our feedback situation. It's uh, distorting the same amount on the positive and negative peaks, giving us the odd order harmonic there. Okay, so now I've connected the amplifier to the speaker, so we can give a little listening test here. I have some copyright safe music from the YouTube library. Let's see what this little amp sounds like. <laughs> hear anything wrong with it. Sounds fine to me. You know, at 1% they say you really can't hear distortion with normal music, and I don't really hear anything. I'm using the preamp to drive the amplifier because, well, this doesn't have a lot of gain, plus these little headphone music players. The uh, headphone jack doesn't have a lot of signal output, usually around 500 millivolts RMS. So to get up to more of a line level, I'm using the preamp, which works fine with this little amplifier. But that's it. You know, pretty basic little amplifier. It's really simple. To me, it sounds fine. It's not that practical. I mean, it uses quite a bit of power just to get one watt. But as I said, with any Class A type amplifier, you're going to require a lot of input power just to get a small amount of output power. So that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching.